Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of We Are Milton, a podcast brought to you by the City of Milton. The goal of the podcast is to provide information about all things related to Milton, Wisconsin. I'm Inga Cushman, Administrative Services Director for the City of Milton, and with me today is Heather Olson. She is the Donor Recruitment Account Manager with the American Red Cross. Thank you for joining us today, Heather. Hi, Inga. So, Thank um, you for having me. Yeah, so as a fellow Miltonite, what is your favorite thing about Milton? I think I just love that we have everything in this little town. There's so much cool history um, that our family loves to learn about. And we love to share with others. And also the community, which I'll get into because it's why I fell in love. The Milton community, blood donors. That's how I fell in love with um, the Red Cross and um, biomedical services in general. Just the, the community that we have here. Um, just captured my heart. <laughs> so I just, I, I just love the community um, and the people here. It's one of my favorite things too. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do for the Red Cross and your role with, with the organization? Yeah. So I manage five counties um, for the Red Cross. So I um, am kind of the, the, between the hospital and um, everything below that, um, I kind of am responsible for everything under that falls under my umbrella. So the hospitals will tell us what we need to collect to meet patient needs. And then um, the account managers in their area will um, basically are responsible for collecting all of that needed blood as cost effectively as possible. We obviously want to um, be good stewards of our resources. And so um, I will try to um, basically collect that hospital need um, in as few drives as possible. So sometimes I'll have anywhere between 15 and 30 blood drives a month in those five counties. Um, and uh, that pretty much, you know, there's a lot under that umbrella, but that's kind of the, the, quick, um, the quick version. Perfect. Well, thank you for joining us today and lending some of your expertise to the topic. And the topic for today is we're going to talk about blood donation. Um, Anita, Mayor Anissa Welch on January 18th at the council meeting, she read a proclamation for National Blood Donor Month. The American Red Cross recently released information about how the nation is facing a crisis because of the lack of blood donations occurring and the continual need in our healthcare facilities. So Heather, can you tell us a little bit about the crisis the nation is facing and um, what we can do to help? Yeah, so we're, we have been and are continuing to face an unprecedented blood shortage, um, the lowest inventory levels in a decade. And, you know, there are a lot of reasons for that. We've had a, a, a lot of natural disasters. We have had um, a lot of tragedies. There have been weather issues. That's always a, a, an issue that impacts, especially the Midwest every single year. Um, and then the ongoing COVID implications. So a lot of businesses that would um, host drives are having employees work virtually. So they're not able to host those drives um, or at least collect what they used to. Um, uh, we're back into schools again, but for a while, um, and still some schools are not allowing visitors in. So um, we collect 20% of our, our blood supply from high school and college age students. So um, not being able to be on school campuses, that was really tricky for the blood supply. Um, and just overall, the, the health of donors. So, um, you know, you have to be healthy and well to donate. So when we see high numbers of, of people with COVID or colds, flus, things like that, that really impacts the blood supply as well, because there are less healthy folks available to donate blood. So it's kind of just that perfect storm of events happening all at once that are making um, it really difficult to maintain a stable blood supply. And so what that means for hospitals um, is that they will have to kind of triage the need. So they'll have to decide who needs the blood the most. So while there might be, you know, four patients who really need blood, they're going to have to decide this person might have to suffer for a little while longer because we just don't have enough on the shelf to meet that need. So they'll ha have to kind of make that decision, which I would never want to be in that position, um, having to decide which patient gets their, their blood medicine essentially and which which patient doesn't. So that's really, really tough. Um, and so we're just trying to collect as much as we can um, to try to overcome that that need and and fight back against that awful shortage. 
Um, how do you find blood donation events if you're interested in, in helping helping with this crisis right now? Yes. So we have um, our, our uh, website, redcrossblood.org. Um, and you can simply, in the, in the upper right-hand corner, enter your zip code. And when you enter your zip code, so I'll put 53563 in here, and it will pull up all of the blood drives near you. And it'll show what kind of appointments are available, how many appointments are available, um, even down, you know, the hours, um, the everything that you'd need to know, all of the details of the blood drive, even what promotions are available. You know, we have a lot of sponsors who provide promotions um, to kind of incentivize donors to kind of, you know, sweeten the deal for them to try to bring them in and motivate them to give. Um, although most people do just like to give because it makes them feel good. Um, we do have a lot of promotions available. So redcrossblood.org is going to be your very best bet to find every single blood drive near you. Um, and then, you know, there are people that will travel, you know, that will go to, I know someone in, in this area who will go to a Johnson Creek blood drive because she likes their snacks. They do a really cool snack spread. And so she likes that, um, you know, so people will kind of go, um, you know, or someone might work in Fort. And so they want to find a blood drive near their place of employment. Um, and so you can kind of just um, search blood drives and there's a map feature too. So you can kind of see where they're at. I know in my counties, I try to make sure that there are many different days of the week times um, available to, to donors so that we can kind of make it as convenient as possible, make it so that we, there aren't, I try to, to eliminate as many hurdles as possible to donating. We just want to make it super simple and rewarding for people to give. So redcrossblood.org and then search by your zip code. When I was looking on the website um, last night or the night before to kind of prepare for the, this podcast, this episode, um, I saw on the website there was options for power red and blood. Can you yes. explain those, those differences? Yes. So a whole blood donation is what most people think of about when they think about giving blood. So it's you give one pint and they separate that one pint into your red cells, your platelets and your plasma. And so the, each of those three components can be given to different people. So somebody, you know, might need platelets, somebody might need plasma, somebody might need red cells. And so they separate those three components out. Now we also have a proceed, and that takes the time on the bed is about eight to 10 minutes. So that's, a, it's pretty quick. Um, but the whole process in general, we like to say takes an hour and we can talk about that. But the other procedure um, uh, to do a power red donation, we take power red donations from certain blood types that we typically need higher amounts of red cells for. So um, that's going to be your O negative, O positive, A negative, B negative. So if you have one of those blood types and you meet certain height and weight requirements, you can donate a power red. And so what that means is that you you would donate just like you would do a, a whole blood donation, except your blood is spun through a centrifuge. And then we give you back your plasma and your platelets with a saline solution. And then we do that another time. So we take twice the amount of red blood cells um, in a concentrated red cell donation. And then you get your plasma and platelets back with kind of like a hydrating saline solution. And so that allows us to get the most um, needed product from those types of donors. So we typically need a lot of, of ONEG and OPAS um, red cells for traumas and things like that. And so that allows us to collect two units of red cells from the same patient. So it lessens the chance that a recipient might have a reaction to received blood. Um, and it's just a more efficient process for, for the donor. Um, so it takes a little bit longer and then the recovery process in between donations, where for a whole blood donation, you can give every um, eight weeks. For power red, you, can, um, you have to wait 16 weeks. So um, you donate less frequently, um, but kind of make a bigger impact in that concentrated red cell donation for the people who need your specific blood type. What's the most common type of blood? O positive is the most popular kind of blood um, and can be, it's not universal in terms of O negative can go to anyone. Um, o positive is the most popular. So it's the most needed type of blood because the most people um, have that type of blood. So when there's not time to type someone um, in the hospital who might need to receive blood, like in an, an urgent situation, they try to make sure that they have plenty of O neg on the shelves to give that to someone they don't have time to type. But if they do have time to type, 
the, the O positive needs to be there um, because that's what's most often needed. Um, how should someone prepare to give blood? Are, are there certain like foods you should eat or drink a lot of water? What, what are the, the tips and tricks? Yes. So um, we, you want to feel healthy and well. And so we obviously, since it has to do with, with blood, we, we want to make sure that your iron is really good. So some people will supplement iron um, if they choose to, but just eating iron rich food is really, really helpful um, in feeling healthy and well and making sure that you pass your mini physical to be able to give, you have to meet um, certain iron requirements. So we want you to be well rested, get a good night's sleep just so that you're feeling good, super hydrated. That's gonna help your body to replenish those fluids quickly. You're gonna feel better. Um, and it's just a good idea anyway, just to be hydrated, but hydration is so, so important. Um, and so it's just in general, you know, trying not to, trying to stay calm, which I know is hard for people, especially if they're afraid of donating blood, but our staff are really good at kind of, you know, like easing those, um, easing those fears. Um, they're just so wonderful, but I just think it's super duper important to sleep well, eat well, hydrate. So I wouldn't come in, you know, with a cup of coffee and an empty stomach, just to make sure that you're, that you're, um, you feel good. And I, I think, for me, um, if I feel good beforehand, I always feel I always feel great after. Um, and so it's just make sure you're taking care of yourself. We want to give healthy blood to sick patients, you know. So we just want the the donor to be healthy and have a good experience as well. Good. Um, how much blood do you donate each time? One pint. One pint. So the yep. So the average human has about ten pints in their body. Um. So to be able to to give one and it's really, it's really not not that bad. Um. And you replenish it in in just a couple of weeks. So um. It's your body starts to recoup that immediately, and um. That's the, the other good part about hydrating is that just helps your body to replenish those those fluids and, you know, all of your resources faster, but, um, so it's just one pint. It's really, really not so, not so scary when you think about it, that your body has 10. So. Good. Is there anything else that, um, you want people to know about? I think we covered most of the questions that I had, but is yeah. there anything you feel like we didn't cover very well or anything else that you think people should know about? Yeah, I think, um, there's just, a really strong need for, for donors. Um, and I want people to reach out if they have questions or, or worries or concerns um, that are preventing them from donate. I love to help people overcome their obstacles or their fears or their questions. Um, I, I got deferred from donating in college. Um, and then I didn't try again for 10 years, I think. It was a very, very long time. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've heard that, that, that happened a lot. Someone thinks, you know, well, I was deferred. So I'll probably de be deferred this time. And then the next time I tried my iron was off the charts. Amazing. And so I, who knows what I could have, you know, what I could have done in the meantime, um, you know, how many lives I could have helped because each donation, since it can go to three people, um, essentially could save up to three lives. So that's, you know, an hour or less of your time and you can impact three people. Um, and the other, another really cool thing um, when you donate with the Red Cross is that you can track your blood donations. So after you donate, it will give you, um, uh, kind of like your blood journey. And so you can see, okay, your blood is in testing. Um, and then you'll eventually get to see not the individual's name, obviously, but you can see, I know um, I have a, a certain component in my blood where it can be given to babies. So my last blood donation went to American Family Children's Hospital in Madison. And so it just kind of completes that circle. So you can see, you know, people hear from us all the time. And so I think getting to see like, okay, my blood went to a patient here. I just think that's so neat to see and close the circle and always makes me really look forward to my next donation. Um, I think that that is just, it's just really special. It's not um, something that can be manufactured. It has to be given willingly from a donor. And so um, it's just so cool to be a part of. And um, especially here in Milton, I do, and I want to tell you, I just got my morning reports from last Friday. So I do want to tell you how the, we had a blood drive in Milton at St. Mary's on Friday. Um, and so I just want to tell you what the results were because it's really incredible to share. Um, 
it's just really, I, I know I'll share a really quick story, but it's where I like fell in love with the Red Cross because I was working for another nonprofit and had volunteered at this Milton blood drive. Someone had asked me to come and volunteer. And so I did. Um, and I was blown away because first of all, it's just, it's fun. And the staff were so nice and, you know, people are chatting and laughing. And then, um, you know, there's, there's the snacks at the end. So, you know, you, you enter, you check in and, you know, you're greeted and then you do your little health history questions, your mini physical, then you go to your actual donation. And I saw, you know, the staff chatting with community members and just seemed very friendly, but then you go to the canteen area and that's changed a little bit since COVID we have some food restrictions, but, um, at the time there were, you know, the sandwiches and cookies and all these treats. And it was such a diverse group of people sitting at this table. And I know some of them now personally, because they don't, they are regulars, but I mean, it was like a guy in a suit and a guy who, I mean, was like, you know, oil under his fingernails, basically. And the sweet little old lady, and it was just people. I'm like, how often do you get to see, um, this diverse group of people sitting down at a table having a sandwich together who have just done this common good, you know, they have that in common. And I just was like, I want to be a part of this. Like I want to, and, I, and now I get to do that in all of these communities. And it's truly the, the best people in every community at these drives, the best people who are volunteering, who are donating. And it's just the coolest <laughs> job in the world. Um, so, um, I just want to tell you, Milton on Friday, we collected, this is just wild. Um, so, you know, this tiny little town, and it is my, my small towns um, that really knock it out of the park. And I think it's because there's just not that mentality of like, well, someone else will do it. I don't have to come and donate. This town's really big. Someone else will do it. And Milton is just really, really special. So we had 98 donors present to donate. Um, we collected... Let's see, 72 whole blood units, 26 power red units, because we're just crazy power red town, like really, really strong with power reds. Um, eight people were deferred from donating, which is really common this time of year. And so we collected 98 pints. And so that means that that single blood drive at St. Mary's on Friday could have saved up to 294 lives. And that is That's amazing. this community. It's wild. Um, and so we are at St. Mary's every other month. Um, and that is our regular Milton blood drive. We do have, you know, close to the public high school drive in the, in the spring. I'm working with um, Milton Band on a, a club drive that they're going to have this summer. Um, so it's kind of a fundraising drive. So um, that will be like a TBD. I'll send you info to share it out once we get the date settled. But um, there are plenty of opportunities in Milton and, and definitely surrounding too that um, for people to give and to volunteer, to get involved with volunteering. So if you ever are looking for a volunteer experience, if anyone um, you know wants to get out in the community, just chat with people, do something that will is, is very easy and warm and fuzzy. Um, I have opportunities for you. So so, um, you know, checking donors in, even, you know, baking cookies to serve to donors, um, you know, chat with donors in the canteen or just thank them. Um, I think there are so many opportunities. And so I'll make sure to send you um, where, where people can go if they would like to, um, to volunteer. Obviously, they can go to our, their, our website or um, they, can, they can email me as well because I can, I can connect them with some really fun opportunities. Um, and good opportunities just for, for community involvement and to get to chat. I know on Friday, the schedule was really busy and um, I met with the, the collections team supervisor the day before and we kind of go over what to expect for the day. And um, she was like, oh, I never worry about this one with weights because people are sitting and chatting. You know, they want to catch up and stuff at, blood, at this drive. It's very special. And so people be like, oh, I'll wait. They can go, you know, oh no, they can go ahead of me because we're catching up. And you don't see that a lot of places. Um, and so this, the supervisor, she's from Jefferson. She's like, oh, I know they already, you know, they always chat and no one's ever in a rush. They're always just, you know, catching up. And it's just really, it's really, really special. So if anyone does want to get involved, 
I would love to have you, um, you know, would give you all the tools that you would need to volunteer, but um, there are tons of opportunities, not just for, for donors, but um, if you're not able to donate, volunteering is a really great way to, to help um, as well. We'll make sure to have Heather's contact information in the description for this podcast on all of the different platforms that we have it streaming on. Um, my other question for you, though, is what's the most amount of blood you've seen someone donate over a lifetime? Do you have? Ooh, I don't know, but I do have one donor who participated in blood drives um, in Milton for a very long time. She um was the the spearheaded all the food and the amazing um, spread that we would have here and she still donates very regularly. Um, and I looked up her her total because I think she just hit her 28th gallon um, over I think in the fall and it's I mean that's wild. Um, and so it's really all over the map, but I know people that have hit 30 gallons um, wow. or more. So, um, and this is just with our records. I mean, since we started like modern record keeping. Um, and so some of them are likely higher than that, you know, that they have, they started donating before we kept these kind of records when things were a little, a little looser in the guidelines, probably, yeah. you know, 50 years ago. Um, and so it's, it's very cool to see, um, just people get celebrated for those, for those milestones and, um, have kind of, you know, have, have made it part of their life, that it's something that they, that they really believe in. Um, it's so, it's just very, very cool. So she has had 224 donations um, and collected 208 pints from that. So that is 26 gallons. That's still impressive. I mean, that's 208 no. times essentially that you've committed yourself to, to making this donation on, on separate days. It's, that's, so, that's it's impressive. so cool. It is really, really cool. So, um, and I always, you know, tell people that want to volunteer, I'm like, you will meet the nicest people. Like no one, no, everyone is good who come, you know, like mean, horrible people don't give of themselves in this way. So every person that you get to interact with at a blood drive is somebody who is actively like going out of their way to give of themselves. And so, um, it's just really neat to be, to be a part of. So. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to hear, um, you know, stories about why people are donating and, and that kind of thing too. I know my husband during, I think like 2020, 2021, that time period, he um, committed himself to making regular donations because our daughter, our youngest daughter, when she was three months old, she was in the hospital for a surgery and she needed to have a blood transfusion. So mm -hmm. he wanted to um, make sure that he replenish that blood supply that people yes. were so generous to give to her when she needed it. He wanted to make sure that, um, he, he kind of paid it back, I guess. So that yeah. was, that was one of his goals to make sure that he did that. And he, he accomplished that. So he, yeah, he was happy. He felt good about himself. And, you know, that's something that I think is, is really great. You know, just hearing those stories about what motivates people to, to give blood to. Yeah, I love that. I work, I've recently worked with two young people, um, a, a toddler in Watertown who, um, had, has, has, um, I think she's in remission now. I should check in with the family, but we had a blood drive or her family wanted to do that same thing, kind of pay it forward, thank the community for um, the blood that their daughter had received through her cancer treatment. And then a couple of uh, months ago, I had a blood drive in Lake Mills. Um, actually it was just December, but it feels like months ago. Um, a young man who was in a boating accident and had, um, had required a lot of blood and, and his family wanted to have a blood drive in, in honor of, um, you know, the community that came forward to help him. And I get to hear a ton of really heartbreaking stories and really cool, inspiring stories. But I think it's so important to share those stories so that, you know, I ask, especially when I go to high schools, I present a lot at high schools and I'll ask them, you know, do you know anyone who's received blood? And most of these kids will say no. And I think, I bet you probably do, but people don't share those stories enough. And I think having that personal connection or, or putting a, a face or a name to the need for blood really does help. So I like to share out stories of um, folks that have needed blood just so that um, I can kind of just be in, in the conversation that um, you likely do need know somebody who has, who has needed blood before um, and just kind of motivate you in that way to, to put a face to, a, to the need. Um, you know, blood is perishable. So they, you know, people hear us asking for it all the time, but that's because it doesn't last forever. Um, 
you know, so we have, you know, we want to keep the, the supply coming because it's getting used up and, you know, then we have to replenish that next supply. So um, that's kind of why you're always hearing from us, but we just want to make sure that it's on the shelf for whoever needs it for whatever reason. Um, so I'm just, I'm so thankful for this community, obviously just knocked it out of the park last Friday and every blood drive in Milton. I don't think as long as I've been here, you know, over five years, I don't think we've ever had a flop of a blood drive here in Milton. They're just, people just come out and it is very neat. So I'm very grateful. So with COVID still happening now, um, what kinds of um, experiences or precautions, I guess, should people expect when they come to the donation site? Yeah, so we are very, very careful. Um, obviously, we're regulated by the FDA always. Um, and so we're pretty strict with our COVID protocols. Um, and we want to keep donors safe. And we also want to keep our staff safe. If we have a staff you know, a breakout of sickness, that means blood drives could cancel. We wouldn't have staff available to staff those blood drives. So we want to keep our staff very healthy as well. Um, and so every donor is required to, to wear a mask. Um, we do take temperatures in the health history area where we do that quick little mini physical. We do check donors to make sure that they're feeling healthy and well, that um, they meet the necessary health criteria. Um, and one of those those factors is, you know, screening for signs of illness and checking temperatures. Um, and so the masks are required throughout the whole process until they get to that canteen area, um, which we do space out. We are spacing beds out um, and we do really try to keep keep donors as separate as possible. We um, used to be a little bit um, looser with walk-ins. We try to limit those now. We know it's not possible for everyone, but we really try to adhere to that schedule as closely as possible because it allows us to monitor how many people are in a space at one time. So we're really trying to be careful of that. And then with the food. Um, we try to limit touch points, clean touch points, and um, serving food, especially because most blood drives will serve food family style, you know, set out a tray of sandwiches or cookies at a table. Um, now we can't, we can't do that. We can't serve any food family style. Everything has to be prepackaged. So we always send some snacks, juice, water. And so we can do that or the blood drive sponsors sometimes will put sandwiches in bags or, you know, individually package them and have one person serve them. Um, but that's just one other way that we try to limit um, unnecessary contact and unnecessary touch points. Um, and so we really um, just want to make sure that we're keeping the blood supply stable, but we want to keep our donors and our staff healthy. So that obviously is very, very important to us. Um, and so even while some other places, you know, kind of laxed their, their COVID protocols, um, you know, I kept hearing like, why aren't, you know, why are you guys still so, um, so strict? But we just have to be if we want to keep collecting blood. Um, you know, we want, we need to keep our donors healthy. We need to keep our staff healthy. So, so we're pretty careful um, to just keep doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think the next blood drive in Milton is March 25th, some, sometime in March at least. Yes. So the next, yes, we have, I have a ton in Janesville, um, Edgerton coming up all around Fort. I mean, just so depending on their there are a ton of opportunities, especially if you don't mind, um, you know, making a little bit of a drive. The next Milton blood drive at St. Mary's is Friday, March 25th. Perfect. So mark your calendars for that. It fills up fast. Um, and so redcrossblood.org, you can enter the sponsor code Milton or just put your zip code in. Um, you know, we never want to turn donors away. It's hard to, to guess, you know, how many people might, um, how many people might present, but it just keeps filling up. And then by the time it's full, I can't, you know, staff are already allocated somewhere, so I can't increase it. So it's always a bummer. Just it's happy. It just I'm happy when the schedule's full, but then I'm always like, oh, then not everyone who wants to give can. So um, you know, always working to add more opportunities. So if you, you know, if your place of employment wants to host a blood drive, if you want to have a drive at City Hall, we could have a blood drive at City Hall. That would be fun. Um, there are tons of opportunities. Um, I'll always, you know, try to find creative ways to differentiate one blood drive from another um, in terms of different times available, different days of the week to, to make sure that we're offering opportunities to suit everybody. So um, just keep looking. And if you can't, you know, find a blood drive in your area, 
we'll, we'll add one. You let us know, we'll, we'll find an opportunity that will work with your schedule. But um, yeah, I would love to, um, you know, just keep adding more opportunities. As long as donors are, are showing up, I'll just keep, keep adding drives and we can, you know, Milton can single-handedly solve this blood crisis. <laughs> Leave it to the people of Milton. So, yeah. yeah. Is there anything else that you want people to know about donating blood? It's fun. It's not, it's not that scary. You don't even have to look, um, you know, no one loves needles. So, you know, we hear that all the time. Um, and it is really fun. And you feel like a superhero afterward. You know, there aren't many things that you can do that will directly save a life. Like, you know, you can donate funds somewhere. You can donate your time. Um, and there, there are many ways to make a great difference, but there are very few ways that you can, you can give up yourself of your time that will directly impact or save a life. And this is one way to do that. So um, I hope everyone will try it at least one time in their adult life if they're healthy and able. And um, if you have any questions about donating or apprehensions, send them my way, or I'll connect you with somebody who can answer those questions for you. So we can, we can get you to a, to a drive and helping save lives. Perfect. Well, thank you, Heather, for joining us today. And again, we'll have Heather's contact information in the description area of this episode of our We Are Milton podcast. So you can get in contact with her if you do have any questions or anything like that. And thanks to everybody for listening to this episode. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please contact me. My contact information will also be available in the, the description for this episode. So our podcast is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Facebook. And we post a video version on YouTube as well. So until next time, we are Milton. Milton.